is going on YouTube of one and only x -Ram here. Today, I'm obviously driving. And that's kind of what today's video is all about, is driving and what it really means to me and why I kind of have a little bit more of a passion towards it as opposed to riding. I know a lot of you guys are going to watch this and go, wait, what? You don't love riding that much? No, no. I, I, I love riding, don't get me wrong. But my passion for motorsports and everything lies with driving. Driving is one of those things I really love and have a passion for. And while riding is fun, it's something that I do enjoy doing. And I, I have a passion for it as well, but not to the level that I have with driving. This is something that from an early age I wanted to be good at. And as I've gotten older and as things happen, I realized how much better I, I needed and wanted to be. Whereas riding is something that I do on the weekends, sometimes during the week, I'm all right at. Um, something that I don't feel a deep desire to improve as hard as I do with driving. I do feel like uh, my riding does need to improve, don't get me wrong. But driving, there's, there's a level that I want to be at that is a little bit different out of writing. So where did this passion come from? Where did this all start? Where does it start for anyone when they get the driver's license? You know, I remember taking, you know, I remember taking my driver's exam and getting my learner's permit at like 15. And I was so ecstatic. I, even though I knew that I had to have my parents with me and I could only drive a certain time of day and stuff like that, it didn't matter. I got to be behind the wheel and drive. Now, a little a full disclosure on this, I had actually been driving years before that. Um, my parents were adamant with allowing my sister and I to actually understand how to drive at an earlier age than most so that we could really jump out in the real world in the driving sense and kind of not be lost and freaked out or anything like that. So when I was like 13 or 14, I went to a party and when I was coming back, my dad picked me up in a truck and it was snowing and I was in Maryland. My dad let me drive his truck and it was a little Ford Ranger and it, he's like, okay, just floor it. So I floored it. Obviously in snow, your tires just spin. As we're going, he's like, okay, slam on the brakes. Slam on the brakes, felt the ABS, do this thing. And he kind of allowed me to feel what a car is going to do in snow. And what happens when you start to slip. And kind of what things feel like. Because a lot of driving comes down to feel and if you've never experienced a certain situation, you're never gonna know how to handle it. And from that point on, you know, as a teenager, I thought I was a decent driver because of these experiences. But one fateful day when I was 17, it kind of changed my outlook on driving altogether. And that day I was going to the batting cages and I decided to go a different route than what I normally do. And this hill kind of comes down and then at the very bottom of it, you can make a left-hand turn, but there's no turn lane. And the speed limit's 55, so you come to the bottom of the hill pretty quickly. And I crested the hill, came down it, and noticed that there was a car stopped in the middle of the road making that left-hand turn. Well, I tried to go around it, and my rear bumper, my driver's side rear bumper clipped their passenger side rear bumper and it spun me sideways. And where I spun sideways at was actually another pullout for another turn from another road. So there's actually space between the guardrail and that lane. There wasn't just a shoulder, it was actually a little merge lane. So I'm sliding sideways through this median and I'm like okay I got it I got it and then I overcorrected it sent me the opposite way really quickly and I went all the way onto oncoming traffic driver's side door first and 
what happened was a motorcyclist was coming the other way and I T-boned him. Or he T-boned me. We, we, we hit at a T. And he hit me just behind the driver's side front tire. So had it been another what, two feet, he'd have been in my lap and it'd have been a very bad day for both of us. It was still a bad day for him because his hand went through my windshield, it broke his forearm, skinned his arm. He obviously had a lot of injuries from the impact in general, not just his arm. And his bike went cream. He, the guy was injured for sure. My car was uh, essentially totaled. They totaled out. It was a 93 Ford Tempo, so they didn't really care too much. <laughs> they totaled it. It was done. But from that point on, I thought I killed someone. And it was because of driver error. I wasn't fiddling with anything at the time. There were no regular cell phones. I had one of those little Nokia simple handheld phones. There wasn't any texting or anything like that. It's just one of those things that inexperience reared its ugly head and caused this to happen. And from that point on, I got this thing in the back of my mind that I wanted to be really good at driving. So every car that I would get, I would kind of learn how it handled. I'd learn how it drove. It's like, that was an automatic, and I decided I wanted a manual. So what I did was an ex-girlfriend of mine in high school had a manual car, no power steering, and I would take it in the parking lot that she worked in because she worked late at night, and I'd just go there, hang out, but I'd take her car out and learn how to drive manual that way. So when I finally got my first manual car, which was a 91 Honda Accord, it's a two-door, uh, I went to the lot, and like, ah, oh, we got a five-speed. Awesome. So I went to try to take it out. Scared shitless. Didn't stall it or anything, but, you know, I'd, I'd only been driving a manual for maybe a month, and I was in a completely different state at this point. So that car, I wanted to learn how to be really smooth with. I wanted to learn how to not look like a complete idiot while driving a manual because it is really easy to look like an idiot when you drive a manual. But from that point on, I sold that car and I got my first V8. I got a 5.7 Challenger RT. First car I had at well over 300 horsepower. First car we will drive. And obviously burnouts and stuff like that were really cool try to slide it but I didn't really understand what I was doing in all reality like I would try to drive it fast and that car just didn't handle for anything the brakes were really bad had tons of body roll it was just a it was a hard car to try to drive around a turn quickly it just had too many things going against it but it wasn't until I upgraded to my first SRT Challenger, my 392 that I had, that I really got to experience and learn how to no shit drive a car fast. And really understand the dynamics behind the vehicle you're driving. And I got to go to Bon Rock High Performance Racing School and get to understand how to deal with oversteer properly. How to mitigate understeer, especially with these cars being so heavy that it can push into turns. So how to understand how to deal with understeer. And then go build from that and go on the racetrack and be efficient around the racetrack. I mean, there's a little bit different than some of the other ones I've been to. But the, the ideas are still the same. There's still a certain way to enter a certain turn. Increase the radius, increase the radius. You know, late apex, early apex, all, there, there's a whole world out there of turns, and there's different ways to enter each one, there's different ways to enter the same turn, depending on the car, depending on circumstances, depending on if there's traffic, you know, there's, there's a ton of stuff, but to really get my feet wet with that, really opened my eyes to how bad of a driver I actually was, there's a lot of things I didn't pay attention to, a lot of things I didn't notice, and you would think, okay, well, you're talking about racing, and that doesn't translate. It's bullshit. Anytime you go to a track for 
professional, that stuff's going to translate to your everyday driving. It just is. You're going to realize how you control your car, and it's going to make sense. That's the, that's the biggest thing about driving is people get in a car, turn the key, push the gas, and they go to work. What they're doing with the car doesn't make sense to them. They don't care. As long as it gets from point A to point B. I hear that all the time. Oh, with a vehicle that gets from point A to point B, that's it. Well, that's that's not all you're doing. You have to understand where you're looking while you're driving. You know, I, Troy, or Hef and I, Hef and I did this video, uh, a live stream the other day, and I talked about vision being one of the most important things that teach younger riders to do and to understand. If they, if you look at something and you don't understand what you're looking at, then there's no, there's no help there. There's no point to it. But if you look at something and you can make predictions based on what you're seeing, you can make a good decision while driving. So this is something that I wanted to really, really get to understand. So uh, when I traded my 392 in, I got this Hellcat, I got to do the racing school again. And I really, really picked the brains of the instructors, really tried to hone in on you know, the vehicle control and everything else. And then I got the opportunity to do a lot of one-on-one -on -one. with a driving instructor named Kai Goddard. Uh, he works at Indy Motorsports Ranch, and that place in general is my happy place. I'll, I'll get into that later, but I got to work one-on-one -on -one with him, and, you know, he got to bring another level, another way of going about driving fast. And... It, it made a lot more things make sense and it grew the passion and the desire for driving. So every day when I go out, I look at turns that I go around and wonder, okay, how can I do this a little better? How can I do this so I can see better, so I can see the other cars better, so I can see oncoming traffic better, so I can just make my commute easier and faster and more efficient. I, I look at all these things now and you think, well, that's a, that's a lot to look at, man. There's there's too much stuff while you're driving to deal with. Yes. But when, especially for someone driving a manual, when shifting and feeling the gas, feeling the brake, feeling the clutch and, I, and, and your shifter, when that becomes second nature, you don't have to think about it anymore. And that's the point that I'm trying to drive here is you have to get to a point where this stuff, your steering, your shifting, your braking and stuff like that, it's just second nature and it comes so easily that you can focus on everything else. And that's the level that I feel every driver should be at. And I don't think they are. What I believe happens is they get in the car, they get complacent in the fact that, well, I'm going to push the gas and I'm going to go fast or I'm going to go. I'm going to hit the brakes and I'm going to stop. It's, it's that binary, it's that simple to most people, and it's not just that. There's more to it. I see people all the time that step the brake, step the gas, you can see their car, the car does this. So obviously, they're being very hard one way or the other. They're not slowing down at a good time. They're waiting too long. The, I cannot tell you the amount of people that, you know, you're at a stoplight, you go around that left-hand turn to go perpendicular to where you're at how many times have you gone around that turn and cut it short and then realized you're over the dotted line in the next lane I guarantee you a multitude of you guys watching this have done that at least once a day not just once in their lifetime once a day because you don't realize that when you enter a turn at a certain angle it's going to push you out at a wider one and like that's the type of stuff that I, I think about. It's the type of stuff that I try to perfect in my turns and everything like that. I love driving. I love being behind a wheel. I love shifting. Yeah, there are cars I'm going to get that are automatics. But I love cars more than I love bikes. I know a lot of you are going to have some broken hearts. But it's true. There's just something about handling a car... To, to a, such a, night, a next level. I am by no stretch of the imagination a professional. Not by any 
not by even this much. <laughs> I've ridden with them. Like I've done a lap in my car and then I got had them get in and drive my car and it's it is just not even night and day, it's other fucking worldly. Not even a comparison. Because of the level of understanding of a car and the dynamics of them. So I know this is a rather long rant, but it's it's what I'm passionate about, it's what I love. And I would implore all of you guys that watch to understand what you're doing when you're driving. To really try to hone in different skills. It's like, yeah, is, is it nice with the manual to be able to heel toe and stuff like that? Of course it is. It's fun to do. It makes downshifting when you're coming in a turn quickly much easier, much more smooth. But I'd rather you be able to come up to a stoplight, look at the other lights, the other lanes, realize that your light's about to turn green, put in the second gear as you roll in, and then accelerate with traffic as they pick up from a red to green light. Like, look at situations like that. So, I hope you enjoyed my long rant of my passion for driving because it is a huge passion. And I hope it kind of instills a little bit of fire in you guys to possibly take training to get your driving to another level. Even if you don't race, I don't, again, I don't race, but having confidence in your driving ability to be able to handle certain, uh, almost every situation. And by confidence, I don't mean arrogance that you know for a fact, oh yeah, I got this. No, no, no. Don't approach it like that. You have confidence in, yes, I know how to negotiate a turn when I'm going this speed. And the other thing it does is it allows you to know what your limits are and then stay away from them a good amount. So when you do decide to be spirited while driving, you're nowhere as close to your limit. So with that, you all have a good one. I'm going to turn around, go get some groceries because, you know, it's, it's regular life. <laughs> Back to the grind after the 4th of July weekend. Oh, if you like this video, hit the like button. If you liked it, subscribe. If you didn't like it, subscribe anyways. There'll be something you like. I do a lot of different content, not just cars and bikes. Actually, I think this channel is going to be mostly cars and bikes. There's a lot more content on this channel. And there might be a video here or two that you definitely do enjoy. So with that, you'll have a great week. And I'll talk to you later.